Welcome to this week's episode of the Renaissance Man. And this is a special treat for everybody. This week's theme is a classical artist who was never classically trained. And I'll let you guys know what that means. This gentleman, and this is gonna be the lar- longest introduction in the history of interviews because the King Nasir Jones is here and he deserves that. This gentleman has one group album, four mixtapes, one collaborative album, 79 singles, you getting old, man. <laughs> one EP, five compilation albums, 13 studio albums, and 51 music videos, including one you shot today. Welcome to the program, Nasir Jones. Thank you. I'm honored. I'm honored. Thank you, boss. I appreciate the love. So let's just start at the beginning. The first time I got introduced to your lyrical wordplay was live at the barbecue. I was listening to the main source. I'm looking at the front door. I'm like, hey, and then all of a sudden they passing the mic around like Wu-Tang Clan. And they're like, oh, stop the mic, stop. He was like, yo, we gotta get this guy the mic. Yo, 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 yo. So can you relive that moment for me? Because that became something that birthed the legend. That was, um, yo. That was the beginnings, the home beginnings. And um, I was working with Lars Professor Paul from a group, uh, Main Source, and he was just this young prodigy. Um, he was ahead of his time with the production and he, he worked on his album and um, he put me on the song. And um, the rest is history. The song is Live at, live at the Barbecue. Myself, Akinelli, Joe Fado, and Lars Professor. And it's like a posse cut, what they used to call posse cuts. <laughs> and they let me go first on that joint. And that's all I needed was that first, that uh, first verse on that joint. And that's, I just took it from there. It's just like, we just went. So in football, like the quarterback's main attribute has to be at some point thrown from the pocket. For you, it's always been your lyrical wordplay and your intellect. Why has the purity of the sport of rap been so very important to you this entire time? I think, um, like yourself, we grew up as fans. And um, the, most, the most startling thing I ever saw was Run DMC. Um, rock box, King of Rock. Um, seeing them on uh, MTV, that they was even getting coverage by MTV. Um, it was just, it just blew me away. Guys like that, the Fat Boys, you name it. Uh, Slick Rick, one of my favorites. You know, I just, I just, I just saw what it was doing in the park jams, Jalen and with the DJs that brought the equipment out. Um, and I just saw it go from there and I just saw it just growing. I just, you know, so they, I'm still, I'm still a fan of that side of it, the early side of it, because I'm still getting up on songs that came out in like '81. Mm-hmm. I still find songs like like that, and um, so I'm, I'm a just a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And you've also not only combined your ability to spit, and I say this a lot, but I'm gonna say this multiple times because you're here, and I know I use this for other people, but you literally spit bars. I've been saying that for so very long. But you also institute critical thinking, intellect. What are some of the artists that inspired you to put that in your rhymes? Um, I think um, it starts from the early days of Melly Mel and um, Mo D and um, um, it's so many of them. Um, Double Trouble, uh, when I saw them in Wild Style, um, and then it graduated, the, the game got into a uh, Kooji rap, Rakim, Kane, those guys, you know. So I know, are- so I know that you were a chip tooth assassin and you were spitting bars, but you also had a combination of cool and you seem to be like one of the first dudes that the dudes thought was cool and the ladies thought was fly. And then you hit us with the mathematics as well. 
the game in your rhyme. You always elevated. I always got smarter listening still to this day to your rhymes. Why was that important to you? Oh, man, that means a lot. Um, I think um, with rap in general is words. So the more words you know, the more meanings of those words, the better you are. That's your ammunition, you know, and uh, learning words younger just took me on a journey, you know. Um, it just took me to a place where, I, well, you know, the tapes we was buying, I'm hearing like check out my melody and, you know, um, some of his lines was like, I never heard him. I never heard the word Moet said in such a smooth way. It just, I take seven MCs, put them in a line and have seven more brothers who think they can rhyme and take seven more before I go for my 21 MCs ate up at the same time. Like, I mean, it was just like those kind of rhyme schemes were never thought of before. And I thought that if you can do that to the world, then I want to attempt to try to do it. If Coogee Rap could say, the things he was saying, and Big Daddy Kane saying the things in his wordplay, um, I just had to join that party, you know? And I wanted to mean what they meant to me. I wanted to say, if I'm gonna get in this thing, it gotta be for real. So I appreciate what you said, man. All facts. And you made us feel like Queensbridge vividly is what it looks like through your rhymes. So give us a picture of what it was like growing up in Queensbridge for you and your family? I mean, there was different times, different eras. There was the time when we were kids and that was fun. We were, we were a fun family. We had it all, man. We were like, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my crib was kind of lit. There was times when it was just the black and white TV too, the black and white TV with the antenna stuck in it and you change the channel with the pliers. With the pliers all day. You know? <laughs> The good, you know, the hum, the good beginners, man, making toast at the bottom of the stoves with the cheese on top. You know what I'm saying? Like, we wasn't even on welfare, and we had the welfare cheese because that was the best <laughs> cheese. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it would come from those fun times till you get to a point where you're in school and you're trying to figure out your way and what career you think you want to have and, you know, started falling behind with that and started to, like, want to hang out on the block more and then the block took us over and then it was just like, whoa, how's this gonna end? So it was an incredible roller coaster ride, incredible, beautiful people. Uh, I'm, I was inspired by the people I saw growing up. They were really uh, intelligent people from all walks of life that gave me uh, words of wisdom. You know, older people, they gave me words of wisdom. My mom was, you know, the center of it all, you know, pushing us to, to be better. You know, she always was trying to get us to see the whole world as ours, like, you know? So and as you- My pops too, my pops too, of course, cause he's in the music and um, he's coming back with euros and pounds and francs and showing me this. And I'm like hearing stories about him getting wild with his band and getting locked up in Europe. I'm like, what is that like? You know, I don't never wanna, son, don't you? you don't wanna get locked up in Europe. And I, I remember that, you know, and he told me I trapped, you know, I was a weed smoker at one point when I got into the music later. Mm -hmm. He said, never bring it with you because wherever you're going, they can, they can have it there for you already. Watch out. <laughs> so I, took, I took those rules when I started making music, but, you know, um, you never forget where you come from. And since you being from Queensbridge, you've taken where you've come from and turned it into Queensbridge venture capitals now all of a sudden you went from being an mc to being an entrepreneur that's amazing growth how did you go from doing and uh being a, one of the greatest mcs that you still are by the way you still and we'll get to king's disease and all of the amazing things you're doing right now but you're also an entrepreneur and not to count your pockets but you're winning in that game how did you get to that side of the business uh, going back to Queensbridge, before I was into rap, I was trying to be a businessman. Like I was into, I'm talking about very young. I was, I, I, I would make files in my drawers. You pull them out, I got files. This is the comic book business. This is the, that, the gaming business, like making board games. This is, 
And we created board games. We was crafty little kids and that other kids could play with. And and then to the back burner, I was like, I'm a screenplay writer. I'm a, I had all these aspirations at a very, I had this imagination. I know a lot of kids out there have the same, if not more, bigger dreams than I had. But I had these dreams to be a businessman as a kid, um, just from watching television. You know what I'm saying? So to come from where I come from, like I say at 10 points, um, a hood that's known for murder, I named it after a hood that's known for murder, now do a merger, to flip it and change it into something that we've never seen before. You know what I'm saying? Queensbridge Venture Partners. Never been seen before. And now my life is about um, meeting interesting people, doing interesting things for the future. And I want to be a part of it. I'm at that age where I got to that age, Jalen, that I just said, these things interest me. The things that I liked as a kid, kid, Mm -hmm. they, they're back and, and more than ever. I'm, I've done the rap thing. I've done, you've done it so long that you want to do something else. And so not divulging too many details, but there are certain things that people can Google about some of the investments that you've gotten yourself into and that were really lucrative. And as former athletes, I've seen Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal do the same thing. And it's refreshing for me to see artists doing the exact same thing. So how did you get from, okay, I'm the best MC in the game, to now I need to start taking the steps to be one of the best businessmen in the game? Well, I got to say, some of those things on Google, you might find some things that are inaccurate. Some of these numbers that they come up with, I don't know where, this, it's, where it comes from. But um, I think I was uh, talking about it to my business partner and friend, Anthony Soleil, and he, he knew where I wanted to go with it. And um, we just we just build on it. And, you know, through Steve Stout, a good friend of mine, I was introduced to uh, Ben Horowitz. And me and him just got along about food. And that conversation turned to other conversations. And I think Anthony saw a connection there. And, you know, he became a mentor, if you will, for me and Anthony in the beginning and um, helped us along the way see some different things. That's next thing you know, I'm taking meetings to Silicon Valley, 8 a.m. in the morning. And I liked it. And I mean, I met people, I saw people building up their startups. I saw people that looked like it was, it was about to be something. I saw companies that were already, we were a little late getting in. So some, some of the numbers are inflated out there that they're putting out there, uh, but nevertheless, Nonetheless, I got involved with a lot of brands and people heard about me and wanted to take meetings with me because we knew what we were doing. And um, it just kept growing and growing from there. That's dope. And I've been fortunate enough to eat at a couple of your restaurants. And I've been inspired by food as well in a lot of ways because I always think back to sugar water and mayonnaise sandwiches. And you talked about some of the things you ate growing up. So now that you're in the restaurant business, how has your diet changed? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. I think my diet changed like at least 10 years ago. Before I got in the restaurant business, I just realized I can't eat like I'm 14 years old no more. Um, so my diet got healthier, and I just do everything in moderation. But I'm definitely a foodie. And so if it's pizza, I want the best pizza. I want the I want the best uh, comfort food, so I got down with sweet chick at the right time, and it's 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 out there. We got a couple of stores now. Um, now we have little chick. That's you know due to what's happened with the pandemic, we had to you know form around it and 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 make it work. You know, so the menu's a little different, but we're around. We're here. So if I went to Sweet Chicks, and by the way, please let people know, this ain't just in New York. This in L.A. This man is an entrepreneur. So please let them know where the restaurants are and if they go, when they go, some of the things they should order on the menu. Uh, we're in Brooklyn, two locations in Brooklyn, uh, Williamsburg and Flatbush near Barclays. We're in low, uh, Lower East Side on Ludlow Street. Um, we're in Queens on Vernon Boulevard, where I grew up. 
Uh, oh. Shout out to everybody in Long Island City, Queens. Shout out to Queens Bridge. Oh. Astoria, Ravenswood, everybody. Um, we're in uh, LA and we're in, also in Queens. We're in City Field where the Mets play. We're in there. And uh, we have uh, one in London. And we had another one in London about to come, but the COVID thing stopped everybody. We have part that was about to open a wrap, but I don't want to mention yet because uh, it's not ready to be mentioned yet. But brother, I'm grateful. I'm happy. Your money's no good there. If you're listening, everybody from Sweet Chick, when you see him rolling there, his money's no good there. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. I appreciate that. And COVID has had a major effect clearly on all of us. We've been quarantining. Over 220,000 people have died. So professionally, as an entrepreneur and as an artist to just put out a great project, how's, how are you doing How are you doing during these times? And how has it affected your business in either way? It affected everything in, in, a, in a crucial way. Um, but we've been lucky, you know what I mean? And we've been, we've been going really hard to keep everything uh, more than a flow. We're doing everything we can to protect the people we're working with and, and all of that. And it's been like, for me, I'm a homebody, so I, I like to be indoors anyway, but it's, a, it's a, a messed up time in the world. And I, I say that we gotta vote. Even if you don't know who you wanna vote, I mean, even if you don't believe in, I know what you're probably thinking, but you still gotta vote because and, you know, just it's, it's, it's a big gamble, you know what I'm saying? But you still got to play the game. And that's the game that was around before our generation was born. And we, we probably can't change it overnight, but we got to start somewhere. Um, I think we, we, we start with somebody. Um, well, I won't get too deep in that. I just know that during Yes, this you can. I do. We, we can go there. It's that time of year. You're, you're a signature voice. In this yeah. world, Nasir Jones, I appreciate your humility. But when you talk, you move mountains. And when you tell people to vote, they listen. When you say a black girl's lost, we listening. Mm. We're listening. How it's do you feel minutes. about the cycle of what's happening right now? And people in the rap game seemingly to do surprising endorsements, I'll say. Mm. Yes. I mean, we, we have to uh, realize, like, we can sit back and think that, you know, it's not going to affect us either way. It's, we're not counted anyway and all of this and that. But we still got to keep chiseling at it. You know what I'm saying? We got to still, because once we give up, it's over. Everybody can do what they want to us. We got to continue uh, fighting, whether it's voting. Some people don't like marching. Marching has always been productive. Marching has always gotten people uh, to the next level. So... We got to do all the things. I don't tell anybody how they can uh, uh, fight back against injustice. Fight back in your way, you know, as long as it's from the heart. And um, I'm vote. I voted. You know what I'm saying? Because because you know, I, the first time I voted was Barack Obama, um, and and this time I had to. I mean, why not? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important. That's it. You know what I mean? Do that along with all the, everything else we do, we can do that too. You know what I'm saying? So it is and, what it is. And also, like, it's, it's, it's a sense of self that we have as a people, and you alluded to it, chipping away at it. I call it, like, taking field position. We start the game, and we look up, it's 400 years of slavery to zero. It's like, we know we ain't going to win. Like, we ain't winning the game. But you still got to tell your team to play as hard as they can. Right. That, that's where we are right now. And you as somebody that continue to embody that and never, um, you, never deviate, you never deviated from your message. How tough has that been for you to do over the years? It's tough. To, it's, people talk about staying true and staying real. People talk about it all the time. And you see people jump off. Oh, I thought he was real. I thought she was real. How tough has it been for you to stay real? 
Um, I realized that there must be another fight for me. I realized that if I'm seeing people jump off the real bandwagon and back or jump off of it and go, they, they, it was too much for them. And it, they were all human beings. Nobody's perfect. I can't yep. expect everybody to be with the torch and run it all the way, but it's just give it all you got. And mm -hmm. even the people that jump away from it, uh, uh, stop being consistent. They even inspire me because I, I look at it like they went as far as they can go. I can only go as far as I can go. And, I, and, and I have to realize that there must be a harder fight up ahead. If I beat this level and there's people that are falling by the waist, uh, then maybe there's another fight. So don't get too happy too soon. You know, this means that you're being counted as the one that people probably want out of the way. And with that being said, I think that's what life is about. It's about just pushing yourself and taking on all the challenges. You took on challenges you know, big challenges. And um, I admire you for that. And, and you've inspired many people. Thank and you. hopefully that I am too. And, and we know what's right, we know what's wrong, and we want to do, we want what's right. And what's happening is uh, breaking the chains of systemic racism and police brutality, where we see what's happening in Nigeria, mm. uh, it's happening all over. South Africa, it's happening Cameroon, Congo. We are, they seeing, they're seeing what the world is, reacting to and they realize you know they don't realize they've been going through their struggles too mm -hmm. and we're seeing them going through their struggles and if you haven't seen them take a look at what's going on in nigeria right now the congo and all over the world and realize the whole world is underneath this 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 chain of injustice in its own in, in, in different ways and it's hard for artists to speak out about race religion politics this or that because you become the poster child of that idea you might have said and now they they come at you because you're that but i don't care you know what i'm saying i, I always just this is what i'm here to do i'm here to do uh the thing i love to do the the rest of the stuff comes with the all of the accolades and all of that that's cute but what's real is that i really love what i do and that's if if i can do that that's all i want to do is continue to create music my and brother other art Absolutely. If I could pay you a compliment or an accolade, and I appreciate getting free meals at your restaurants, but I must say this at all of our listeners, Nasir Jones should get free meals everywhere he go in the world because the sacrifices that you've made, brother, the people that you've inspired, the lyrics that you've put on wax, all of the times you stayed true to yourself as an artist. There were people like me that also had chipped teeth. And I was like, yo, Nas which one? Which one? Which one? <laughs> this one. I fell okay. playing. I got veneers when I got to the league. <laughs> my, my fixed tooth brother. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so there, there's an inspiration beyond just the music. And I'm forever grateful. But before I let you get out of here, I do a segment called Gone in 60 Seconds, where we do a rapper fire, where I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Here we go. I'm going to start the clock in three, two, one. What's more essential to your style? Fresh kicks or fresh hairline? Fresh hairline. All day, all day. You a legend for that. You I on the book. I Salute. follow you. I follow you, family. I was like, yo, I got to make sure I rock it when the king come on. No doubt about it. I got to pay him. You killing the king. <laughs> You're on a restaurant in Brooklyn called Sweet Chicks. We, met, we mentioned that. Pick one thing off the menu that's a must order. The vegan, the vegan uh, sandwich. The vegan sandwich. I think that's new. Wow, that's, uh, that says a lot from a guy that used to make government cheese on the bottom of an oven. And that cheese took forever to melt, family. <laughs> but when it did, when it did. It was heaven. It was it heaven. heaven. <laughs> Miles Davis or Dizzy Gillespie? Miles. Miles. I just saw his documentary, Birth of Cool. Incredible. And it was a great moment for hip hop to see you and Jay standing face to face, eye to eye, because y'all had a lyrical assassination battle. But lyrics aside, which song had a better beat? Ether, Ether. or Takeover? <laughs> How about that's a how about that's a verb now? We use that as a term it's like yo, you got ether. I didn't even know what that meant. I had yo, to Google it. Yo, the other beat was by Kanye, so that was that was hard. That was hard. I know. And uh, uh, what's uh, Ron, Ron Brown? Uh, Ron, Ron Brown. Brown. Ron Brown yeah, did yeah. that, right? 
Yeah, did he? Yeah. Yeah, that's what people used to go read the album, boy. And he yeah. had another song too. Uh, we getting bad money. Oh, we getting a hey, rap money. Oh, yeah. That's, I remember he was. Oh, that was he did that beat. That's dope. All right, a couple of more twenty seconds before I let you get out of here. In the 1998, I'm gonna say that again. The 1998 Oscar for best actor in the film goes to Master P and I Got the Hookup or Nas and Belly. Me and Belly. Belly is a classic. Shout out yeah. to Hype Williams. How Shout was it to, to be Hyde. on that set? BMX. That was fun. That, that was fun, but it was nervous too because Hype would be on my head trying to fire me every five minutes. <laughs> the DMX was so good and I was just, you know, I was like, this, he's amazing. DMX, I can't keep up with this guy. He's amazing. At this point in your life, with all you've accomplished, are you more Uchi Wally or one mic. Well, Marvin Gaye was, let's get it on. But he was also, what's going on? Could I be both? <laughs> Could I be both like the King Marvin? I, I mean, I think I'm more one mic, honestly. I think I know what you're saying. I'm more one mic than, than I'm definitely more one mic than Uchi Wally, though. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Oh, man. And last, before I let you get out of here, gone in 60 seconds, 60 seconds, you crushed it. Please tell us about the most recent album. I know about it. I've studied it. It's a classic. I want everybody to go out and cop King's Disease. King's Disease is dedicated to all kings and queens out there who take care of their responsibilities, take care of their business, and dealing with a lot of uh, distractions, a lot of hate, and even things that you might not be doing to take care of yourself. King's disease is about getting right, getting yourself right, and dealing, and just knowing it comes with the territory. Uh, uh, the, the, the drama, the stuff comes with the territory when you're standing up trying to do right, but keep going. One yeah. last thing, ultra black. Yes, sir. Ultra black, how about yeah. that? The song and the hoodie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ultra Black, man, is, a, is an enjoyment, a time for uh, when it's a time when the world is trying to put their foot on your neck, literally, mm -hmm. you can't because we're still proud of who we are. And it's a very inclusive song because it's about pride. Everyone should have pride no matter who you are, Italian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Greek, Asian, Indian, have pride in yourself. It doesn't say anti you, it's saying, no. I'm ultra this, come over here, let's have fun. We're going to is a good time. That's what the song is, a good time. Well, my brother, I love and appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. Looking Thanks, forward man. to catching up soon. I'll see you at one of your couple of restaurants and can't wait to go to a, a, a grand opening because it sounds like you're about to do one outside of the United States. I heard that. Yes, sir. Um, yo, as soon as that's possible, we got we to gotta do it up. We got to do it up. I appreciate you having me here, brother. I appreciate you uh, supporting me and and with the record and all of that, it means a lot to me, dog. Love. Thank you a lot, family. Appreciate right. you. Love. Appreciate